Good morning. Welcome to lesson one, video 25. If you are thinking to yourself, man, what is up with lesson one? Why is it so long? Because in lesson one, we're laying the groundwork. We're exploring a contemplative alphabet, so to speak. Have with it. Once that contemplative alphabet is in place, for the next, oh gosh, 12 lessons or so, we'll be constructing a rudimentary contemplative um, vocabulary. So it gets easier and easier and easier. Why don't, why don't I break the first lesson up into several por um, portions? Because when I, when I send people home, from their first lesson, I want them to have in their possession a nine-minute practice that works, that is effective at pacifying external or internal sufferings, whether it be um, circumstances, you know, uh, sufferings caused by circumstances, or suffering caused by illness or weakness or pain, or sufferings caused by anger or fear or sadness. I want to send them home with something that works. That's very important to me. So, we're going to start things off the way we always do. This is only going to make sense if you are looking at the latest version of the first uh, set of lesson texts, also known as the first quarter lesson texts. You can download the most up-to-date version of this free PDF simply by following the links below the video, assuming you're watching this on its YouTube page. If you're watching this on Facebook or, or Google+, Plus, in the little bottom right-hand corner is a little icon for YouTube. You click that bad boy, it'll take you right where you need to go. So when you're on this, this video's dedicated YouTube page, you'll find the link to take you to a website entitled First Quarter Practice Materials. The second item on that page you'll, is a link so you can download the latest version of this free PDF. If you haven't done that within the last 24 hours, push pause, do that now, I'll wait right here. And you're back. Good job. Okay, so join me on page 7. During our last lesson, I told you that these were the, four, the final four verbal contemplations for this exercise set. Um, last exercise, we explored possibility. Now we're going to explore probability. We're going to explore motivation with the simple, rhetorical, well-worded, assumptive, mantra-empowered question, why would I let go of this grogginess and its causes right now? And I hesitated because there's a blank, and why would I let go of this blank and its causes right now? We always want to put that which is most real to us in the moment. Why would I let go of this pain and its causes right now? Last exercise, the word was could. This time, the only difference is a consonant. We replaced the C with the W. We've replaced the could with the would. And so, remember, these are rhetorical questions. Our job is not to answer these questions. Our job is simple. This isn't the hard-ass school of enlightenment. This is the lazy bastard school of enlightenment. It's easy. On the in-breath, silently read the question. You know, and people say, well, I don't know how to talk my in-breath. No, no, no. It's silent. Just read the bad boy. It's as simple as that. On the in-breath, mindfully, with full attention, read the question before you. On the out-breath, as you whisper, O Mani Padmi Hum, as many times as you comfortably can in one breath, Relax. Now that sounds difficult, but actually, we're hardwired to do that. Every time we breathe in, 
whether we know it or not, whether we feel it or not, we tighten up a little bit. And that corresponds to the act of tightening our attention or concentrating. Every time we breathe out, whether we know it or not, whether we feel it or not, we're, like, we're relaxing, even just a little bit. And that is that corresponds to relaxing or grasp, or, you guessed it, letting go. So noticing and letting go are already hardwired into our body, which is pretty convenient if you think about it. So why would I let go? Um, let's say let's say something else now. Why would I let go of this annoyance and its causes right now? Why do we play with this exercise? Because we're trying to get as much momentum, psychic momentum, behind the idea of letting go. We've already centered our energy with the first contrived concentration. We've sharpened our awareness on our affliction of the moment with the spontaneous concentration. We explored the sucky nature of our afflictions in the previous concentra uh, contemplation. We explored the fact that they are always changing, that they're fundamentally not who we are, they're fundamentally not um, our possession, and fundamentally not graspable. So if they're not graspable, we might as well let go. Last exercise, we explored the possibility of letting go. Now we're explored the probability. What are some of the reasons I would let go of this jerk that has boiled up into my life? I said, boy, I should say bubbled up. Uh, as in, you know, a toilet that just won't flush right. Um, <laughs> and so, once again, we don't answer this question cognitively. We don't answer it consciously. We let the subconscious do the work for us. Our motivations could be good. Our motivations could be bad. Our motivations could be selfless. Our motivations could be selfish. We're simply collecting reasons subconsciously. Remember when you were a kid and you would get a, a plate of cookies and a glass of milk and you'd stack the Oreos just as high as you could? And uh, the mess they would make would be directly proportional to the height of the Oreos? Same thing here. The more reasons your subconscious stacks to letting go of this, the higher the probability of you letting go of it. So don't judge yourself, don't listen in, just play with the exercise. Of course, I'm reminded of that wonderful line from the water boy, you can do it! <laughs> so, let's play with this, let's play with this about seven different variations. When you practice this for real, you won't do seven variations. I'm just going to give you seven variations right now, so this has extra added meaning. And remember, this is just part of a larger whole. When you get... When I've completed the explanation of each of the components of this set of practices, then I'll give you seven. Then I'll, I'll give you a guided practice. I'll give you seven different ones. But right now we're going to keep it simple. So how about this? Why would I let go of this pain and its causes right now? More money, 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 more money. Why would I let go of this illness and its causes right now? More money, 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 more money. Why would I let go? of this weakness and its causes right now. Why would I let go of this annoyance and its causes right now? Why would I let go of this fear and its causes right now? 
Why would I let go of the sadness and its causes right now? Some people go through and some people go through life and they've mainly got an awareness of, of the crap in their life, and that's perfect. This can help you deconstruct all that. Some people occasionally have a break from the crap in their life, and that's great. Um, we can for those we can simply practice with the with the pronoun this. Why would I let go of this and its causes right now? But some people are just, whether it's because they're raised to be self-righteous or defensive or for some reason, just not in tune with any of the problems or shortcomings. So for those people, and we've all been those people once in a while, you know, we can simply um, let go of pride. Why would I let go of this pride and its causes right now? Or if we're completely convinced of our perfection of humility, <laughs> we can simply let go of the personal pronoun. Why would I let go of me and its causes right now? Now, don't worry, that's not some great metaphysical thing. If you do that, you won't disappear into nothingness. But you might, you might get out of your own way. Be a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more spontaneous, a little bit more hip and groovy. You can't ever tell. Well, that's all you get for today, little buckaroo. So... What I'm going to do right now is quickly access the proper software. And I'm going to remind you to click the button down here that says like. It's going to reveal three more buttons. For your, you know, then there's social networking buttons. I invite you to uh, like me on you know, Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, oopsie, Google+. You might not be a fully enlightened uh, teacher of uh, Buddhism, but... You can spread the teachings that are effective with others simply with a click of your mouse, which is pretty cool. Below this video, you'll see another link that allows people to register for the next series of weekly webinars. The Friday series of weekly webinars begins November 2nd. I'll see you there. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh, money upon Mary Have a beautiful day.